What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'll be showing you one of my childhood favorites, and this ain't your mama's meatloaf. If it is, she's got some explaining to do. Before we get into the recipe, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. Look at how moist the meatloaf is. All right guys, let's get in the kitchen and make it happen. Here we got some chopped parsley, one green bell pepper, and half of a large yellow onion. You can use red or green bell pepper, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna give this parsley a real rough chop. We got about a quarter cup of chopped parsley right here. That's gonna add some fresh herb flavor and a pop of color into our meatloaf. It's optional, but I do like to add it to mine. After that's chopped up, we're moving on to our bell pepper. Now you guys know this is how I like to prep my bell pepper, but I always tell you to do what you're comfortable with. So if you have a different method for prepping your peppers, you know, go for it. I like to cut the tops off of mine and then cut around the core, leaving the seeds intact for easier cleanup. Now I'm gonna slice the pepper in one direction and spin them around, slice in the other direction just for a nice rough chop. Not rocket science, guys. No right or wrong way to do this. The only thing you want to be conscious of is to make sure that your peppers and your onions are about the same size after you chop them. That way they cook at the same rate and they'll be nice and tender in your meatloaf. Moving on to our onion. Only using half of an onion because this one's pretty big. If you got a smaller onion, you may need to use a whole onion. Same deal here. We're going to chop in both directions. Nice rough chop about the same size as our bell pepper. Now we can put our hatchet away and move on to sauteing our veggies. Over medium heat, we're gonna add a little avocado oil. Then we're gonna add in those onions and bell peppers. This is just to kind of get the cooking process started. That way they tenderize nicely in the meatloaf. About three to four minutes or until the onions become translucent and tender. After the first minute or two, we're gonna go in with a tablespoon or two of garlic paste. You can also use fresh garlic or minced garlic. Whatever you got in the fridge is just fine. Also going in with some all purpose seasoning. And again, just sweating this down, letting it tenderize a bit before we add it into our meatloaf. Once it's right where you want it, you do want to put it in the refrigerator and let it cool off before you add it to your ground beef. There we go, looking good. Gotta hit y'all with that once or twice. All right, so here we have one pound of ground pork and one pound of 80-20 ground beef. If you don't eat pork, you can always just use ground beef. Also, if you don't eat either of those, you can use turkey or chicken as well, but two pounds total. Get in there with your hands and mix everything together as you see me doing right here. So here we have our veggies that have been chilled in the fridge going in. Also going in with one pack of boars and garlic and herbs cheese. This stuff is fantastic guys. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend it. Also added two tablespoons of sour cream. Trust me on that one. Now we're gonna get in there with our hands and give everything a nice mix. Make sure all those flavors are well combined. And we got even coverage with that boars and cheese. Next, we're going in with some seasoning. So I'm adding some smoked paprika right now. Also a little Italian seasoning. There we go. Remember guys, there's two pounds of meat in there, so make sure you season it adequately. Gonna add some crushed red peppers just for a little bit of heat. and some all-purpose seasoning, a little salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. Going in with that chopped parsley from earlier. Next, we're going in with two beaten eggs. That's gonna act as a binder, help it hold everything together. We're also gonna add some breadcrumbs here in just a minute. For the breadcrumbs, you can use Parmesan flavor or Italian flavor or just the plain breadcrumbs. Whatever you got in the pantry will be just fine. About a cup and a half to two cups total. You wanna kinda go by feel. I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about, but work all those ingredients in, add your breadcrumbs a little bit at a time. Those are going to act as the binder and really hold the meatloaf together along with those eggs. So just keep working that in with your hands until it forms one really big meatball, basically. As you can see here, it's starting to kind of hold together. That's what we're looking for. Once you get the consistency that you're looking for, pop that into the refrigerator for about 30 to 45 minutes. That way it really takes shape for you. And then you have something that looks like this. Next, you wanna use your hands and form it into a meatloaf. You can also use one of those meatloaf pans. I actually don't like using those pans because you don't get as much crust on the outside. 
Uh, so this is the method that I like, but you you know you can use whatever you want. Just go around the meatloaf with your hands, shape it into whatever loaf size you want. Just make sure that it's even, that way it cooks evenly. There we go. You'll find out how OCD you are when you're doing this. We're gonna hit it with a little bit more seasoning, so a little all-purpose seasoning. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, right on the outside. This is the test to make sure your meatloaf is combined properly. If you can pick it up like so and transfer it to your wire rack, then you're in good shape. Preheat that oven to 375 and we're gonna pop this in that oven for about 45 minutes or so. It's about an hour and 15, hour and 20 total cook time. You wanna wait until your meat gets to 165 degrees internal temperature. Moving on to our sauce, I'm going in with one cup of your favorite barbecue sauce, followed by one cup of ketchup about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, or any spicy brown mustard will work, one tablespoon of worst word in the world sauce, a little smoked paprika, a little salt and pepper, maybe a little onion powder, garlic, break out the whisk and mix to combine. Taste as you go and adjust the flavor as needed. You can add a little spice to this if you want, you can add some hot sauce. Going in with two tablespoons of tomato paste as well. And then last but not least, we're going in with about a quarter cup of brown sugar. Give that a good mix, taste it one last time just to make sure that it's on the money. You wanna make sure your sauce is nice and warm before you add it to your meatloaf. This is how we're looking after about 45 minutes. For the final 20 to 30 minutes, that's when we're gonna brush on this sauce to let that caramelize nicely in the oven. Don't be shy here, add a nice thick layer of that sauce. This is the beauty of using the wire rack because the fat will drain from the meatloaf and any excess sauce will just drip down to the bottom. And you don't have to worry about your meatloaf really cooking in it and getting soggy. There we go, that's a pretty meatloaf, guys. This is one of my favorite recipes from childhood. This is actually one of the first things that I learned how to cook was meatloaf. So I hope you guys give this one a try. Let me know what you think. I know sometimes meatloaf gets a bad rep, but if it looks like this, it's going to be good. Quick little money shot. Then it's time to slice this bad boy up. You'll be able to see just how juicy this meatloaf is. You do want to allow it to rest for about 20 minutes before you slice it. That way the, you know, the juices have time to redistribute and they don't end up all on your cutting board. Oh man, that looks good. That's grade A food porn right there, guys. If you don't like meatloaf, this one's going to change your mind, I promise. Let me know in the comments how you like your meatloaf if you're a barbecue sauce topping or a tomato paste topping kind of person. Going down with a little chopped parsley just for a pop of color and to make the thumbnail look good so you guys can click on it. And this is the real money shot. Look how juicy that meatloaf is, guys. Oh my goodness. Gotta go in for the taste test now. Just break off a little piece. Oh man, that's good. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to give your boy a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.